welcome to Louisville Slugger, Hillrick and Brasby, the factory where we make Louisville Slugger bats. We made over 1,500 for you and your wow. career, Nomar. Uh, we also... I thought I hit better than that. I can't believe that. I, break that <laughs> I didn't break that many. There must have been I a know. lot of BP bats There's in gotta there. be some stories there. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Sure. But, uh, Louisville Slugger is such a well-known name in baseball. They have been around for generations and supplied baseball bats to great baseball players throughout history. They were also the bat company that I used as well. They were a huge part of what I needed to do out there on the baseball field. Nomar Garcia Parra put his bats to good use. Rip to left, back it goes, back, 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 go! After a 30-game hitting streak helped him capture the Rookie of the Year award in 1997, the Red Sox shortstop won consecutive batting titles in 1999 and 2000. His 372 average in 2000 hasn't been topped since. I didn't play or think about winning a batting title. That's not what I played for. And I didn't even want to know what my batting average was. I didn't even look at it. I didn't want to know. I just wanted to know how I was feeling that day and prepared that day for success and how was I going to help my team win that day. Swing and a high drive to right field. Hit well. Back close to the Back to the warning track. Back by the bullpen. Forget about it. Grand slam. No more. Garcia Parra. I really played this game on feel. At the end of the year, what I would do is I would sit with my dad at the end of the year, and we would talk about, we'd reminisce over the season. He says, how did you feel you hit this year? So I wanted to see how I felt, how close it was compared to what the actual number was. And on and Belton, deep to left field, he has just hit his second grand slam home run. Fly away, no more Garcia Parra. How does that feel, Nomar? Is that yours? 30, 31 and a half ounces. Whoa. Hey, it says 31 and a half ounces. That's 30. what he this said it is. It'll probably be about a 30, 31. Well, here's, that's the amazing thing. These guys, you think about how many hacks they've taken. Yeah. <laughs> you know, there's an old story about Ted Williams. I, I'll let PJ tell this story. He tells it better. So the, <laughs> the Ted Williams story about the, the difference in the bats. Yeah, so Ted gets shipped over our bats one day. This is back in the days when we still turn all our bats by hand. Right. Ted picks up the bats. If there's something wrong with the handles on these, he sends them back to our factory, tells our guys to remeasure the bats. Ted was absolutely correct. The bats were five one thousand of an inch off. Five one thousand of an inch. Wow. But he knew. He knew. I, I could tell. He picked that bat up right there. I could too. I could tell. I, I wouldn't be able to tell. Well, I remember there was a time. Chuck came by and I said, hey, will you tell him to stop making my bats out of the machine and put them, make them by hand again? Whoa. And he goes, what are you talking about? I said, you're making them in the machine. I need them by hand, I can tell. And he was like, and he goes, you're right. He goes, <laughs> he goes you're right, they're making a machine. I'm like, oh, I know. I said, I can tell. This is the way we do it now. It's a CNC lathe. So come on over and show you. You're, you're back in the day. Yeah, dude, back in the day, man. <laughs> they don't do I, it that way I anymore. remember, man. It was impressive to see how they took the billet, the piece of wood that was going to become a baseball bat. And every billet is all the same size, pretty much. They all look, your round piece of wood, and next thing you know, that billet goes into a machine, and the machine just starts shaping the bat, and the bat comes out of the model that you request. Uh, green button, whenever you're ready. And that's just the first step. That's just an early step that, that the whole bat is going through. So from this to that in about 30 seconds. That's amazing. Wow, and it's amazing when you feel the difference of what it was <laughs> and how much wood is actually taken off that yeah. to create that. That's pretty fascinating. Pretty I love incredible. that. And now he's got to roll it. He's got to roll it. He's got to test it, make sure it's even. And then I'll let you do your stuff. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Thanks so much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Who's this that? Cody's? Oh, is it Cody's? Hey, Cody, that's a magic now on your bats. Mwah. Woo! <laughs> this is a barrel compressor. It's gonna, this is like the boning process. So this puts about 500 pounds of pressure on the barrel. Wow. And uh, just helps close that grain yeah. even more. It makes it harder and harder. Because, you know, the thing that we've learned over the decades is that 
players want the absolute hardest piece of wood they can get Absolutely. to take in the battery box. Look at that thing. Oh my, feel that. Now, now feel you it. feel it. Now feel it. Whoa. Isn't that cool? Yeah. Like you can now. Really, you can feel the difference. Exactly. Yeah, you're right. Bone rubbing station, to me as a player, is probably the most important station in the bat making process. And you can see uh, this machine makes a, a turn on each pass. So it goes all the way around 360 degrees around the barrel of the bat to make sure that we're getting consistent pressure all the way around the barrel uh, to close that grain with a bone rubber. I love the bone hanging there. there. The That's bone so funny. So, so we used to have in a clubhouse a bone lap like would be right I've seen that before. Yeah. I was you wondering know, what that was for. That was there. So you would do it is you would get there and you'd just be sitting there and you'd be pushing down on it and oh, rubbing the wow. barrel and doing all that. To do this, what this machine does. Wow. That's what guys, yeah. You have a billet, they shape your bat, they make your model. Okay, that is great. But what makes a bat a great bat is how hard that wood is. That's, that's great. Yeah, I always that's used awesome. to see that in clubhouses. I was yeah. wondering what that that's was what for. Hard. So uh, now you're starting to smell some oh, yeah. uh, fumes of finish. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're it's getting back to our too. spray area. Uh, this is where we put the finish on the bats. So. Uh, or I was just in awe of them, like, wow, this is so pretty. It really looks like a piece of furniture and a piece of art. Look at where that. The, where wow. the hickory finish oh would go on the bat. God. Look at that. We're doing all kinds of crazy wow. stuff now. Oh. You know? Oh, uh, smokes. Yeah. So they're going crazy in here just. Uh, it's almost like an auto body shop. Yeah, you know, just spraying yeah, these bats. I think that's what was so impressive to me is now the bats obviously are an important piece of tool that we need to go out there and perform at our best. But they are now looking like a, a true just piece of art. Look at that. Perfect. Awesome. You know what that is? So what's cool? That's that's what Ted Williams was asking Mark McGuire when you smell burnt wood. Yeah. So the, uh, there are times when you foul a pitch off, you smell that. Wow. That's what you smell. That's what you smell. That's what you smell. So you would actually you'd get a hint, like all of a sudden you foul one off, and you're like, and you get that that's right. that exact smell when you can foul, foul off a ball. That's and that's what Ted Williams was asking Mark, and and I know I've had. A, a, I didn't have the, I didn't swing as hard as those guys did, but there were a couple of times I was like, oh, there's that burnt wood, yeah, which is really cool. And once again, the smells. Yeah, right. Let's go. All right, let's go to the bowl.